So I'm with Truot, who's one of our spe featured speakers. It's going to be Saturday night at the Moon Lake Gathering, July 28th and 29th. He's going to be the Saturday speaker. And True, man, every time I talk to him, he just <laughs> blows my mind at the knowledge that he has of all the different subjects. But one of the things he's going to be talking about um, at, the, at the gathering is the Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. And uh, True... There's a lot of things said and written about the Grand Canyon on the internet, other people, but I have never ever seen people talk about what you've talked about. So tell me, how come, how have you got all this knowledge that these guys are going to hear that uh, is not out there? Well, that's a great question, Terry, and thanks for, for taking the time to, to do this little spot. Let me say that there's so much, so much intrigue with this because the Smithson family and the history of the Smithsonian Institute is, is something that we could never talk too much about. Um, there's, there's just incredible underground storage vaults uh, in the Smithsonian Institute where they kind of, it's like I call it informational Area 51, where things that aren't quite uh, fitting the, the, the normal pattern of, of what people want to, are told they need to ha need to know about are hidden away. One of the big things is this this uh, uh, underground ca uh, cavern system was uncovered in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Now let me just say that that the the archaeological history that we've been fed as we go through the public school system is is so so ludicrous really. The Grand Canyon was actually not a, a small river carving it through millions of years. The fact is, with the Uinta Basin, all the inland ocean that, that was all part of that, something cataclysmic happened, fracturing of, of the rock around the time of, of 30 AD that caused a massive amount of water to go out over a, 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 a short period of time and carve the Grand Canyon out. I want to say that on, there's, there's plenty of evidence of that happening. It's, uh, some may say, say it's revisionist history or an alternative reality, but no, it's just archaeologically and, and uh, completely, and if you look at, at geography, it makes all the sense in the world if you look at, topo at topographical maps, okay? So that said, we, we see the beginning of this in, in uh, when, when Major Powell did his first expedition down the Grand Canyon. Uh, everybody thought he was crazy as a loon. You know, there's this one-armed uh, major uh, was lost his arm in the, in the Civil War coming down in the 1870s after the conclusion of the Civil War to, to basically map this great uh, river. They thought he would never, never make it out. If you look at the Powell Museum there in, in Page, Arizona, there's little boats, and, and they go over that the cataracts and the, the massive amount of water. It was, it was an amazing feat to come down. But he survived, as we know. He had a, a Native American uh, Navajo guide uh, that uh, basically took him down, not expecting to even know if he'd survive the trip. It was a, ma a massive uh, leap of faith, really. So they, they, they explained this is, this is in the congressional record because Powell wrote the, his, everything in his report to Congress and he explains what he found looking up at this cave, which was quite a ways up from, the, from where the river was flowing in 1870s. And as, a, as the explanation went, he went up into it I uh, was able to m rock climb up to the, there's like a keyhole uh, opening that was not natural. It was absolutely carved. And he went in and was shocked with what they found in there. Uh, absolutely Egyptian artifacts galore inside. So he didn't have time, of course, to, to do a full-scale excavation, but in his report to Congress, he made mention of it. Well, that, of course, garnered the attention of the Smithson family and the Smithsonian Institute sponsored a second trip through, this time loaded with, with photo, 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 photography uh, uh, equipment to document what was in there. This was a few years after the initial expedition. And so the Smithsonian Institute went in there and, my goodness, took all kinds of pictures. 
And instead of uh, going on down the river, they, they actually hiked up to the top of the rim and went overland from there to map that out. Okay, that's part of the unknown history of, of the early expeditions of the Grand Canyon. So we fast forward from the 1870s when this information became public. It was kind of, you know, uh, the end of the, of the 1800s, the early 1900s, the world goes to war, right? We have the Great War. At the conclusion of the Great, Great War, a guy named G. E. Kincaid, who is an employee of the Smithsonian Institute, he he's, survives the Great War, comes in, and he's, he's funded by Smithsonian to go back in and look for, to look for that lost lost uh, cavern system. So Kincaid does that, goes in uh, under the disguise of, of mineral uh, exploration, prospecting, okay, and he locates the, the exact same Powell Cave, goes in with his, with his photography equipment and brings out a massive amount of, of precious metal artifacts, uh, comes up over the top, uh, of the rim uh, has a he's so excited about what he's found he kind of he makes a press release and the local newspapers all front page headlines amazing find in the Grand Canyon I, I had all these these uh, um, these things the actual art news articles on my blog atruot.com uh, which was all from again the Smithsonian Institute well, my blog was shut down and erased, actually, in December of 2019, okay? With no, no warning, it was just, just taken off, off, offline. Um, I have been able to recreate the pictures that I, that, I, that I had posted on that blog. That particular blog post, Terry, got tens of thousands of hits. It was... <laughs> it was a lightning rod. A lot of people, oh wow, this is fantastic information, Dr. Ott. This is this. A lot of people are saying this is all hoax and a fraud and this is Photoshop. No, I don't do Photoshop things. I just post them. So the question that, that people ask me is, where'd you get these pictures? Well, I had a, uh, he's, he's now deceased, so I can talk about him now. Uh, a friend, a friend named Dr. Melvin Laney in Washington, D.C. had high-level security clearance, and he had full unfettered access to the Smithsonian's archives. He sent me this information tied into the, to what I'm working in the property here in Utah. Now, another story for another time, but it tied in, most definitely ties in, this story of G.E. E. Kincaid and the amazing... Uh, discoveries at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So this, is what I'm, this is what we're going to talk about. I'll, I'll show pictures uh, on a PowerPoint presentation to the to people who want to come and see this. I think it's interesting. So, so, so the bottom line is that there's a lot of things said on on the internet, you know, and that the Smithsonian Smithsonian says now nah, it never did happen, but you got into uh -huh. the actual archives. You got actual documentation. You got. Actual, and you're going to be presenting that stuff at the Moon Lake Gathering. That's what we're going to do. Uh, and, and again, it's it's an amazing jaw dropping story. Let me just give you some some hints of what we're going to be showing. Massive amounts of mummies, uh, and the big thing is Terry is there were thousands and thousands of of panels of Egyptian hieroglyphics that have been interpreted, and what it tells the story of. Will we'll read should rewrite all the world's history, frankly, huh. because it's none other than the the biblical Joseph of Egypt and his history. Wow! Yeah, big time. Wow, it's exciting. And oh, well, even religionists are saying, "Well, that's a real stretch." Well, why? It proves the Bible and the story in Genesis of Joseph uh, to be true. The coat of many colors being sold into Egypt. It answers the question really. It was more than just an, uh, 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 a deal with Potiphar's wife that elevated Joseph to be the most powerful vizier in, and second only to the, to the Pharaoh himself. It tells the story of how he ascended to, and why he was able to bring all the grains and, and, and uh, 
uh, survive the famines that went on. It's all in, this, in the history of this cave in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> it's an amazing story. And with that said, true, um, you know, like I said, every time I meet you, I hear more and more interesting stories, and you've told me some stuff that I've just blown away. So, so anybody, man, um, True's going to be talking about the Grand Canyon in his talk, but he's a wealth of knowledge on a lot of other stuff. And so, get with me. I'll ask you. I'll have you ask him sp some specific questions. You know, that he can tell you because it's just unbelievable. So, so um, before I say that's a wrap, you have also got your own radio station that's that's broadcasted worldwide or well, it's a it's not a station it's a show it's currently on uh, parked on revolution radio uh, we're at fr every friday night from 8 to 10 p.m. mountain time it's called the story behind the story i've been broadcasting for over 30 years actually uh, talking about subjects that that I think are very important that the mainstream media won't touch. And that's what I've been focusing on. The story behind the story is what is called the, the radio show. So yeah. with that said, true man, thank you. And, and we'll see everybody at the Moon Lake Gathering, um, July 28th, 29th, 2023. And we're going to have a blast. We're going to have a fun time. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Drew. Look to, look to see you there. Bye.